So what is hybrid working? Hybrid working has always existed, but its prevalence has been turbocharged by the pandemic and the subsequent remote working experiment. Let's call it that, shall we? There isn't yet a, def a definitive definition, but at its core, hybrid working is an arrangement in which an individual, a team, or an organization work part of their time at the workplace and part remotely. So who is it for? Who's hybrid working for? Effectively, hybrid working is for office-based employees only. So you know, if you work in a restaurant or on a factory floor or on a building site, you need to be there. You need to be on site. Now, there are exceptions, of course, but for the purposes of our discussion, you can assume that we're talking about hybrid working for desk-based employees. So we've had 18 months of remote work, and it's hard for many of us to imagine going back full time to the long commutes, the face to face meetings every single day and you know, pre preparing our packed lunches. So it's unsurprising that almost every piece of research out there is telling us that employees want a mix. They want to be able to work remotely and flexibly for a number of days a week and then head into the office on the other days. Questions then are, you know, is it three days at home, two days in the office? Maybe it's the other way around. Is it fully remote or fully in the office? So there's some of the questions that organizations are facing at this moment in time. One thing we can say is that hybrid working is the term that encompasses all of these options. So what do we as an organization or as a HR team need to do? Uh, where should we start? First things first, you need to listen to your people. So what are they telling you? What are they looking for? Is it four days in the office, one at home? Those kind of questions. The easiest way to find out is through surveys and focus groups. So companies are approaching this differently. They're either deciding on behalf of employees or leaving it up to employees to decide. Some organizations are demanding that all employees come back into the office full time without giving them a say. I'm thinking of Goldman Sachs here as a good example. Their CEO described remote work as an aberration that would be corrected as soon as it was possible to do so. Personally, I think it will be very interesting to check back in a few years time to see how Goldman Sachs are doing. Now, back to the organizations that are taking input from their people, which is the approach that I recommend. Some companies have embraced the idea of allowing employees to decide when to come into the office. Salesforce, for example, said that the nine to five workday is dead and they're allowing their staff choose if they want to come into the office again. Spotify has rolled out a work from anywhere model and Twitter is letting employees work from home forever if they wish to do so. In the US, in a recent survey, nine out of 10 industry executives told McKinsey and company that their organizations will be combining remote and on-site working. So that's nine out of 10 companies that will be asking employees to come into the office at least a couple of times a week. How do you decide who should be in the office and when? How do you decide who can be fully remote if they wish and who cannot. So generally, hybrid work policies exist on a spectrum. On one end, you have the most common hybrid work model, and this was even pre-pandemic, and that is some employees are 100% remote workers, and others are 100% in-office workers. It wasn't overly common pre-pandemic, but there were some organizations that had adopted this model, and the split may happen by department or job duties. So, for example, maybe a software engineering team might be fully remote. I mean, they certainly have the, the tech and the skills uh, to be fully remote. Perhaps then the same company's sales team is fully in office. That's where they need, they need their base. Another way of looking at it is maybe who is remote might be decided by employee location. If, as an employee, you don't live close to an office, that might strengthen your own case for working remotely. So on the other end of the spectrum, then you'll find a very flexible hybrid policy 
where all employees are remote part of the time and in person some of the time with the ability to decide what their balance of in office versus remote work is and you know which days and times work best for them to come to the office so again for example maybe one employee thrives best as a remote worker and only comes in for meetings while another has too many distractions at home i've certainly been there uh, and wants to come into the office more often than not so some workers may prefer to go into the office in the afternoon only while others um, you know may want to be home early so they can collect their children from school does it make sense to have members of the same team in the office on the same days of the week surely that would be good for collaboration for innovation if everyone on the team is together for at least a couple of days a week lots to think about so what do we do next the choice of course is completely yours what's needed is a good policy now don't panic if you haven't uh, put anything in place as yet 68% of organizations have no detailed plan as to how they'll actually manage this. And that's the plan, let alone uh, the policy in place. And you know, you know what? I would not be rushing to create a fixed policy at this moment in time. If you create a strict policy now, if you dictate the working arrangements now, how can you possibly know exactly how that's going to work when things settle down because we're, we're, you haven't settled down yet what kind of norms and nuances will the hybrid model that you choose lead to will it create those clicks uh, among different groups of workers will it stifle innovation and creativity if previously collaborative teams are hardly meeting up anymore my advice is to listen to what your people are saying propose a set of working arrangements based on this input and use the next year to assess and review how things work. Take regular pulse checks to see how things are working out. In a year's time, you'll be much better placed to implement a formal hybrid working policy. What it means to be well has not changed in the past 18 months. What may have changed for organizations in a hybrid model is the well-being interventions you provide and how you deliver these interventions. Traditional supports such as uh, employee assistance programs, they shouldn't really be impacted. Just make sure the details of the EAP are communicated as clearly and regularly as possible. In a hybrid working model, there will, will there be demand for, let's say the on-site gym, on-site fitness classes, You'll almost certainly have been delivering well-being training and workshops online of late. How will you deliver these when employees are spread across office and remote locations? Do you historically have you had uh, on-site health screenings? What about a lot of companies like to organize couch to 5k programs or other initiatives to support and raise funds for charity partners? How will you manage those? Uh, do you have trained mental health first aiders? Or how can you make them accessible to colleagues that are working remotely and those that are in the office? So just quite a few considerations there. But like I said, you don't have to do it on your own. If you follow the WorkWell community's eight-step framework for developing a workplace wellness program that lasts, you can empower workplace well-being leaders in your workplace to develop a bespoke hybrid well-being program for your organization.